Hello, Alex. Uh, I'm calling in today from uh, Lewiston, Idaho, and I got to tell you a story about two producers that run Exactrix equipment. You know Dan Mater, don't you? I've never met him, but I've heard you talk about him, and I saw a lot of information on him on the website. Yeah, well, Dan Mater was in the Idaho legislature for quite a while. Now he's retired from uh, his political career, and he's a full-blown uh, farmer. Uh, the Mater family farms in in three states in the Northwest. Uh, this is a beautiful view uh, of some of the lay of the land at Lewiston, Idaho, and there's Dan. And uh, we're working today with uh, Kenzie Palchuski out of um, Bowman, North Dakota. And of course, Dan's been a no-tiller for over 30 years now. In fact, the field we're standing in has over uh, three inches of new soil that have been added in that 30-year period. Straight no-till, chem fallow, winter wheat, and we've just banded it with the 1890 uh, on 12-inch band centers as a single disc banding tool. And of course, it's variable rate applied and it's sectional control. And Kenzie's learning a little bit of uh, from Dan about how we apply nutrients in the Pacific Northwest, so he can take some of these ideas back to Bowman. Uh, of course, Eric Oldberg has been with him too for a little bit, uh, explaining seeding depth and some of those things. But uh, Kenzie and Dan are getting together and observing a field that produced. Uh, top-notch yields. Uh, joining field last year averaged about 100 bushels the acre and produced the highest protein wheat delivered to the Lewiston Terminal. You know where Lewiston's at. You've been there, Alex. Oh yeah, many times. Of course, it's a seaport and uh, quality wheats now are exported with a big advantage. Here is the tool and uh, you'll notice there is a, a toe-between uh, uh, cart there and that carries 2,000 gallons of ammonia and also uh, polyphosphate and thiosol. And we're making an inspection and just getting ready to lay down the nutrients as we go across uh, this beautiful field of winter wheat, hard red winter. The variety is Rimrock and um, new variety, certified registered seed. And uh, this is an excellent opportunity for Kinsey to get a feel for how to raise winter wheat uh, and get top yields and, and uh, top proteins. Well, Kinsey, he's a little new uh, on farming his own land. He's been around farming forever, it seems, and I uh, understand he just bought a brand new farm and uh, leasing a lot of land, and he's getting into this thing uh, full bore now. Yeah, young guy, just getting started with triammonium, polyphosphate, sulfate, taps, and yeah. he's decided to set up his uh, machine to apply uh, this high-quality nutrient, the most croppable, cr crop-available form of uh, phosphate. And of course, the sulfur uh, stabilizes the ammonia in that band. And this is what his tool looks like. This is actually his drill. The back row is for banding only and seeding also. So he has Xactrix wing injection to band into that uh, field and seed at the same time. The front gang is strictly a seeder. There's the wing injection technique set up to uh, band uh, NH3 and polyphosphate. The polyphosphate goes first with the thiosol and the zinc and then the ammonia directs right into it. Um, also the opener can be set up an ultra endurance 19.6 uh, inch diameter blade and 3 eighths of a thick uh, in thickness. So we can get five, up to five times more wear life out of the, uh, the deer openers by making just a few moderate changes. Uh, that In the rough area there, that's the uh, carbide that's been added to the wing injector. So uh, once again, uh, trying to cover as many acres as possible without having to do uh, a maintenance on the machine. The real net result of all this is great yields, and those yields more than uh, uh, pay for the extra investment. Here we are. now. There's Highway 12 coming across uh, there, uh, cutting across next over to Bowman uh, off of Interstate uh, 90 and 94. Um, we came all across from Spokane into Bowman, and Alex and I are in the field. What do you think, Alex? Well, I'm thinking it's a great day to do photography and interview some of the drivers, and Kinsey's all ready to go here. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more, a little bit more about what Kinsey's operating? Well, he's, he's got a paired row 411 machine. And so this narrow uh, spacing aligns the rows right to the band and makes for super high levels of uh, geometric access by the serial roots. And, uh, you know, Kenzie did it the smart way. He didn't buy a big four-wheel drive tractor and he didn't buy a 40-foot seater. 
he has about 3,000 acres and about seven different crops. So he did it the, uh, the best way he could with what he had, and he went with the Exactrix Taps formulators with wing injection on a Deer 1590 box drill. So 20 feet, you can get a lot done, Alex. That's 120 acres a day. Well, he got the biggest bang for the buck, I think, for what he's trying to do. And uh, you can see here he's, he's doing a great job at it, and he's covering a lot of ground and covering it with a lot of efficiency. Absolutely, and the maintenance cost and all the things considered, he's uh, probably going to be uh, moving up uh, eventually in the five, 6,000 acre guy, and then he'll probably jump to a 40-foot machine. Well, there's the TAPS formulators, the TR series, and uh, on the right is the T. That's the ammonia uh, system that raises pressure and uh, does such a fine job of liquid injection with that terminal orifice. And on the left side is the TAPS formulator, and it's all moving into the uh, GS3 uh, controller via um, ISOBUS. And we either use MidTech or even DEER ECUs to uh, get that information up there. There we're going across the, a field that's been harvested with a stripper hitter last year. And um, of course, auto steering right across that field with that two wheel drive tractor. And uh, boy, it was really quite a thrill to watch a young guy just get started and yet he had a chance to talk with Dan Mater and Eric Goldberg and uh, get some coaching before he jumped right in. There's his pump RPM, Alex. Well, I think the neat thing is here, although it's high-tech uh, stuff that we're doing here, it's easy to grasp, whether you're a young farmer or an old farmer, the, uh, producer. This is information that's easy to understand. It's right there in front of you. And once you make a pass the first time around, the rest of it's a piece of cake. Well, it, it, it does offer uh, some complexities for sure, but, uh, you know, to getting all that hitched up and going together in a single pass, that's quite a deal. But, you know, the long pole benefit of it is just better crops all the time by leaving those bands in place and rotational band loading. And look at that Durham stand in paired row 411. Then we're out there digging and taking a good hard look at it. In the Palouse country, we know this technique is worth 150 more net dollars an acre. And once again, we're looking at seeding depth. And this is really critical with the Deer 1890 opener. About two and a quarter inches is about where we want to put it. We've learned that this opener does not pack on top and produces just great stands in that buffered zone. And uh, wing injection allows this uh, to happen and it comes up very vigorous. Those are great looking uh, Durham uh, seedlings there. Uh, been in the ground about 30 days when we did this digging. And of course it wasn't a real windy day which was unusual for North Dakota, right? It was a really nice day. It was a little bit chilly at first but I think we got used to it real quick. Oh yeah, yeah. And you know uh, there's so much history here with uh, Custer and Lewis and Clark and it's amazing to watch the infrastructure come into place and yet no-till made it happen for these guys. They're in the middle of the country, and the margin is close, whether they go to the Great Lakes or they go to the Pacific Coast. You've got to keep the margin in mind, and these guys are able to add 12% more net margin by simply paying attention to this type of technology. Well, I want to congratulate Kinsey, and uh, thanks for the help to the Honorable Dan Mater for taking time to explain how this works. Hey, Alex, you, we ought to go back out there in July. What do you think? Well, I'm all up for that. You know, we have another trip planned for uh, Colorado and Arizona, and that's going to be happening here this week. And then uh, the next stop will probably be back in North Dakota. We'll leave the wives at home and take our guns, right? <laughs> Pack